You know, Christianity is supposed to be about joy. And you probably all, everybody has some understanding that Christian joy is supposed to be there in spite of circumstances. The Bible says that there is a joy available that is not supposed to be subject to circumstances. And I always have to wrestle with that this time of year. Uh, why, why is it that there's not a relentlessness about my joy? So the Bible very clearly says that there is a joy available. And that joy should make us at least, at least quietly happy. No matter what the circumstances. That there's a joy that the deepest trouble can't put out. And that if properly nourished and properly nurtured, can coexist and even overwhelm the greatest grief. That though bad things happen, they work for good. That's the promise to those who love God. The, the promise to those who love God is not that you will have better circumstances. No. It doesn't say that better things will happen to you. This also doesn't say that bad things are really good things. Oh, no. An endless source of insight for me is Jesus standing before this tomb of Lazarus. When Jesus was in front of the tomb of Lazarus, he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead. He was not smiling. He was angry and he was weeping. Why? Why didn't Jesus Christ say, they think that this is a tragedy. No harm done. I'm about to raise him from the dead. Won't everybody be excited? This looks like a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's really a good thing. It's a way for me to show my glory. It's really exciting. I can't wait. No, he's weeping at the tomb. And why? Because the bad thing he's about to work good is bad. It's bad in itself. See, this does not give you a saccharine view that says, well, these bad things, they're really blessings in disguise. In every, behind every, cl every cloud has a silver lining. Oh, no. The Bible never says anything like that. These are bad things. They're bad. They are working for good. That means God will give them good effects in your life, but they're bad. Listen, Jesus Christ being mad at the tomb of Lazarus proves that he hates death, he hates loneliness, he hates alienation, he hates pain, he hates suffering. He hates it so much that he was willing to come into this world and experience all of it himself so that eventually he could destroy it without destroying us. That's how much he hates it. There is, this is not a saccharine view. The promise is not, if you love God, you will have more good things happen. No. The promise is not, if you love God, that the bad things really aren't bad. They're really good things. No. The promise is that God will take the bad things and he'll work them for good in the totality.